2027. The 6.5 is on the road here in Las Vegas for Dell Technologies World 2025. Daniel, it's been a great event so far. We have heard announcements on hardware, software, and services. Yeah, we are off and running here at Dell Technologies World. And Pat, every year, the show becomes bigger and bigger as AI has continued to become more of an accelerator of the enterprise and business. And of course, this really spans from the data center to That's the device right. and, and services. And exactly. this week, I'm really eager to get a good dose of all of these things and so many great conversations. Yeah, services really are a force multiplier. Uh, some companies just don't have the people, they might not have the talent, or they might just need the direction of those services. And I can't think of a better person to talk services here than president of Dell Services and CIO, Doug Schmidt. Great to see you again. Well, great to be back with you, uh, Pat and Dan, on opening day of DTW, uh, exciting times. Yeah, it really is. It is great to be here with you, Doug, and, and you, Pat teased it, right? Because we started, started talking services, but you added another title because you didn't have enough going on, or I'm not sure what's going uh, on exactly. I there, think it's Doug, called but, scaling. Um, <laughs> work more, um, hopefully make more, but you are now the CIO as well as the president of services. Talk a little bit about that. Talk about what that means and, and what does that have you doing and how has that kind of shifted the role or added to your existing role? Well, yeah, uh, well look, first it's always about the customers as you guys know, which is what DTW is about in and of itself. But, uh, having the CIO role and the services role, there's a lot of synergy around it. And the way we like to think about it is, look, we're customer zero. Um, what we're talking about at DTW, um, in many instances, is what we're going through as a company as well. We get to see that, having and being CIO title uh, allows me to help with that as well. And there's really four pillars um, around our AI uh, strategy. And I know it's going to say this fast, in, on, with, and for, okay? Uh, I know, okay. let me go through those. So the in is obviously the great products we have. You see, and I'm sure we'll talk to Arthur Lewis about the XE servers that we have that are doing phenomenal uh, in the AI space. So products that we have are in around storage and servers. And then the AI PC, uh, Sam Bird and the CSG team building great AI PCs. Those are the in. Um, and then you have the on. These would be the solutions, the software, the things that we're building and putting around our products to make sure that they give the customers the solutions they need. The with is with all of our partners, the great ecosystem. Many of those folks and companies are here this week to help our customers see what they can do around the ecosystem. The four is what we're doing internally to help our teams and our uh, operations run more efficiently and effective with AI. And that's really built around our great supply chain, our competitive advantage in supply chain, services, our go-to-market, uh, and then obviously the product development. So, you know, having the CIO title with the services allows us to help with all of that and to be customer zero. Good example of that is where you saw, or we saw at least internally, IT needing help with use cases. We brought in our team from services to also learn from consulting build the use cases out and go forward and then build a great solution for our customers learning from that. Yeah, Doug, so I've been pleasantly surprised at how you've been scaling, adding new services to the portfolio to meet the, the needs of your customers. And, you know, it, it started very humbly with, let's say, break fix and then deploy and then all of these different services to pull it all together for traditional infrastructure but AI brings a whole new set of needs to the table. And I think going all the way back to, to last year, uh, when you even did some of your, uh, I'll call them consulting services on even uh, what workloads, how do, we, how do we get this thing going? But can, can you talk, where are we now in terms of uh, Dell AI services that you're providing not only to your external customers, but also to your internal customers? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And the reason is because obviously, we've been on this AI journey in services, and I know Dan, you and I have talked about this, yeah. um, but we've been on this journey for seven to eight years, and it really started with machine learning that's and right. digitizing our processes. And, it's, um, and then what we did was, is we had the data scientists seven to eight years ago starting to explore and build off of that, 
Um, by the way, that digitizing of the processes is huge. It gives you a very strong foundation because with that, we were able to have the structured data and the happy path for how things should flow for a customer in a perfect environment. And from there, we really then started to look at uh, how we shifted the mean and we shrunk the standard deviation at the same time. So we, right. were, we were learning with that. Now you add the large language models, the unstructured data, the chat GPT, however you want to frame it, but you add all that and you really turbocharge where you can head uh, with services. And to that end, we, you start to rethink services. You're like, wow, this is really going to change how services are delivered for our customers. First is around the quality of the products. Um, look, I would argue we have the best quality products in the industry. But look, there's always room to improve. Right. Adding telemetry and ability to see where these are at with getting the support teams and the product teams together closer is giving us even higher quality products. Second is around uh, self-healing. We've talked a lot about proactive predictive support. Sure. It's where we need to be to help our customers. Uh, AI is helping with that. And then when you look at online, customers, um, when, they, when they have all the, an event come up, unfortunately maybe, but they want to go online typically first and we have Nest Best Action. Yeah. Now, I'm going to try to, Nest Best Action is what we're calling our AI product and service that delivers great service for the customers, but the reason is because we take all of the knowledge management internally, all of our history, the telemetry coming in with the LLM, and we're able to essentially have the tool Nest Best Action that really gets to a quick resolution with a high success rate. Right. And then last, look, we'll always be here. If customers want to call us, we are here, uh, and we use those same tool sets with our service engineers to, to provide a great service. It's all about really making sure that we have fast time to resolution. And we've seen, by the way, from a services and an AI uh, factory uh, standpoint, 3,000 customers go through AI factory with solutions coming out. So really tremendous progress across the whole spectrum. Yeah, AI is not new to you or services. I, my company wrote a white paper on your predictive capabilities on the client years ago before AI was even cool. <laughs> no, they, you're right. We, and, and so this is really just adding additional capabilities to that. And you're going to hear more about those capabilities today in about an hour, I believe, yeah. uh, with the keynote really around some managed service around AI and security as well. So always expanding that very quickly. Yeah. You said a lot of really important things, Doug. Customer zero is a great you know, indicator right now of how companies are able to adopt AI and put it to work. You have you know, tens of thousands of employees. You are a wonderful opportunity to see how this stuff works within your own ecosystem. And then of course, you have to scale this out to your customers. Right. You know, one of the things I think the market is really focused on right now though is that time to value, right? We talk a lot about building out these mega AI factories. Um, infrastructure is booming. I think the economy and the macro aside, everyone's going to keep pouring investment. The other side though of the debate that is often had is who's using this stuff? How are dollars being yeah. driven in? It seems like you're sort of indicating that that's a big part of what your remit is, both as CIO, Customer Zero, and leading services. Talk a little bit about how Dell is helping customers to extrapolate value more quickly from AI. I mean, you started talking about that. I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. Yeah. Because that's where we're trying to go. No, you're exactly right. And I, I think it's sometimes in the press they're saying people aren't using it. Well, I'll tell you what, with 3,000 customers through the AI factory, I'll, I'll, I think there's a couple examples that come to mind. Um, one of them is Worley. Uh, this is a large professional service company uh, in Australia that helps with uh, mineral and energy, uh, their customers in mineral energy business. And look, when they started their AI journey, they were using the cloud or trying to do it through the cloud. They ran into some bottlenecks. They ran into some security concerns. Uh, the time to value was not going the way they wanted. And we were able to really work with them to clean up those bottlenecks, get an on-prem solution, get the time to value uh, resolved, allowing them to really produce some great results around efficientness, effectiveness and efficiency, excuse me, as well as uh, helping their customers. I mean, if you think about the business they're in, 
uh, getting their customers helped in a much faster fashion. And what's pretty amazing about this is they have 50,000 team members and they believe now that those 50,000 are doing the work of 75,000. Uh, just unbelievable results. Right. Another one that comes to mind is Pure Health and they're out of UAE and as their title uh, suggests, they are in the healthcare business of providing services for their customers in the UAE around healthcare. They were very concerned about security and providing the services. So they are using AI. We helped them set up an AI um, security operations center where they're able to look at 1,000 uh, uh, security protocols coming through uh, actually a second and handle 500 incidents a, a, a day in ground security for the healthcare, actually making their customers and their processes around security very uh, much more effective and efficient and then providing that health care that they want to do. So, look, that's just two out of the 3,000, but there are a lot of examples out there where AIs are providing results today. Excellent. Um, you started off strong. You're adding, adding on AI capabilities to help your customers derive value from AI, but obviously you're not standing still. And I'm curious, how are you evolving uh, the rest of your services to to keep up or accelerate even further? Well, that's right. Um, for the efficiencies we have in AI, it's actually about doubling down uh, where we're headed to help our customers in a vast area outside of just AI. I mean, but they're all interconnected, we know that. Uh, data center my, uh, modernization is still very important. If you think about data centers of the future and where we're at today, right. that's going to be ever more prevalent. Um, you also can look at things like data management, and I know we've talked a lot about this. It's the fuel for AI. Having that ready, clean, and ingestible for the AI is something our customers need help with. Uh, the, think about the PC refresh that's going on uh, right. from 10 to 11. Um, and so we have that occurring. And then obviously security. So there are plenty of service solutions and issues that we can help our customers with around those. And what we've seen to help our customers with those, um, the consulting side. Now, I have to give you guys credit. We've talked about this for a number of years and you've said customers are gonna want more consulting, they're gonna want yes. more assistance. And we've been putting a lot of focus on that. So it's has been very helpful for our customers. Uh, the growth has been very good in that area. But more importantly, helping our customers, we've actually won awards with Fast Company for business services and Forbes actually for business consulting. So uh, we're proud of those awards kind of doubling down and seeing where we're at with consulting. Deployment, customers want more time to work on their strategic AI imperatives and deployment is something we can help them with. So leveraging our capabilities uh, around deployment so that we're able to help our customers time to value much quicker is something we continue to make strong investments in. The managed service side, again, customers are wanting us to help them manage their environments, whether it's PC or data center, uh, to free up time again to work on more important initiatives. By the way, one of the things you'll hear us announce today is Lifecycle Hub Plus, which helps manage the PC fleet, so better fleet management, security around that. And then last but not least, on the support side, yeah. continuing to build that out in a closed loop fashion. This is gonna be important because I think AI helps with this, but this closed loop of getting it back into the products and the solutions is gonna speed up. And so gonna be a lot of great things that we continue to work on around overall services. A lot of stuff moving forward. We've got about stuff. two minutes left here. I think we got time for one more quick question. Yeah, let me, let me take advantage of the moment. Um, <laughs> A lot is going to get announced here. We know there's going to be some big infrastructure announcements, agents and tokens, big focus right now. Do you see these sort of next generation technologies quickly finding their way into, you know, I heard a little LLM here, but that's kind of a couple years old now. Like how quickly does agents, for instance, infuse into the services uh, business, Doug? Oh, uh, we are working on, we are working and actually are implementing those as we speak. And, that agent stuff, I'm excited about the agents, I am. Um, 
So if you look at what agents are gonna do, and we know this autonomous, self-learning, on all the time, able to complete the task, and you think about especially uh, the support or the delivery of services um, from the you know, uh, detection to the diagnostics uh, to the remediation, it's really what services about agents are gonna be huge and are huge, and we're working on that right now where they're gonna be able to pro just provide a tremendous amount of value on that. And I think when you start uh, having these agents work together, uh, Agentic, look, I think this is gonna just be a, an unbelievable opportunity to really genuinely rethink how services is delivered for a better customer experience. Um, and that's what this is ultimately about. Doug, I wanna thank you so much for joining us here at Dell World, Tech, uh, Dell Technologies World 2025. It's uh, the first day, but there's so much more to come. And of course, we appreciate you joining us on the 6-5. Let's have you back soon. I, mean, I think it's become a bit of an annual, hasn't it, Pat? It is. It is, well, I'm glad. Yeah. Always enjoy talking to you guys. Right, let's do it more Absolutely. often. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to this episode of the 6-5 on the road. It's Dell Technologies World 2025. For this episode, we got to say goodbye, but we'll see you much more this week. More to come. And stick around, we are headed to a break.